to the first um, Plasma group implementers group call. Um, so there's a lot of teams here and there's a lot of fun things. And I'm looking forward to a lot of collaboration to uh, move things together um, for uh, you know, doing interesting research, interesting stuff to learn, um, things of that nature. Um, for the various Ethereum implementations. Um, so I'm thinking um, maybe we could uh, go in a circle uh, and uh, introduce ourselves. Um, so uh, let's uh, kick things off. Um, I'm Joseph, um, and here at Paul, this is uh, Carl, Vizalik, uh, and Thomas. Um, so, um, from my perspective, um, I'm not going to be um, doing any direct, um, you know, implementation of Plasma myself. Um, you know, the, the, the plan for myself is to uh, help facilitate and, um, you know, help uh, basically directly help uh, all the various teams uh, develop and uh, build it up. Um, yeah, so that's sort of uh, my perspective. Um, you know, co-wrote uh, the paper with Vitalik several months ago. Um, and I think things uh, I think are ready to be moving forward because people are sort of exploring implementations. Um, yeah, so I guess we could go introduction in a circle in a more detailed way, I guess. Okay, sure, yeah, so I'm Carl. I'm an Ethereum Foundation researcher and working on, have been working on Casper, but also uh, these days, Plasma is my new frontier because you need to scale Ethereum. Yeah, um, Vitalik, um, I've, I guess in the context of Plasma, I came up with the minimal viable Plasma spec about a week ago, and I have been helping David and possibly other, uh, other people with um, kind of guiding along implementing it. Um, I'm Thomas, I'm uh, kind of an advisor in the Ethereum space. Uh, uh, I usually look at things like scalability and interoperability. And uh, specifically, I'm an advisor to uh, Omisego, uh, the Interchain Foundation as well, and also Web3 Foundation doing Cosmos and Polkadot respectively. Okay, so um, I guess um, let's just go in a circle, um, randomly chime in, I guess. Hello, hey, um, I'm Elaine from Cornell, and I'm right now on leave of absence to start a company called Thunder Token, as many of you may know. And I'm very interested in finding out more about Plasma and you know, try to learn about how Thunder Token can potentially integrate with uh, Plasma. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm with Consensus. Uh, I'm on the protocol engineering team along with Ben and Shahan. And our team is working on a Java-based Ethereum clients. And, and as part of that, we're standing up an R&D team to help contribute to some of the research efforts in the community, Plasma being hopefully one of them where we can contribute. Excited to be here. So I'm Ben, uh, and segueing from that, I am product owner for that research team. And as Daniel said, uh, scalability is uh, key for us, both pub public chain and private chain uh, enterprise is our interest. And which team did you say you were part of? The um, Pegasus Protocol Engineering Team in Consensus in the oh, R&D. Got it. And I'm London-based for the record. Got it, got it, got it. The same team? Are you on the same team as Daniel? Yep, that's great. So Pegasus wow. is uh, the Protocol Engineering Team, uh, and we have a number of groups within that, R&D being one. Oh, okay, cool. What does Pegasus stand for? Is it like... Is it, is it Protocol like... Engineering Groups and Systems. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh. I could tell it was an acronym. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, we went for it, we couldn't resist. Uh, cool. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Sean Kachadarian. Uh, I'm based in Toronto, uh, part of Consensus, founder of Pegasus, uh, researcher and developer. Yes, hello everyone. I'm uh, Peter, the CEO of Bankex Foundation. We are currently working on to the Make blockchain is easy to work with the, uh, in, uh, with about scalability and uh, work with the plasma uh, as well as Alex Plaza, uh, based in Moscow and I'm currently in Thailand. Hey guys, 
I'm Adrian. I'm with Tenement and Cosmos. Uh, Zucky, in, in this context, wearing my Energy and Foundation hat. Oh, yeah, we're here with the right. other Cosmos people working on integrating elements of plasma into the Cosmos architecture. Oh, yeah, and I'm based in the building. Okay, yeah, um, I work with Peter. I'm Alex from Bankix Foundation. Um, and I'm the person who actually does the plasma implementation for Bankix and the public demos that we have. It's everything was done all by myself. So if you have any particular question for implementations, just ask me here in private. I think the contact information is in a mail for everyone. Awesome, yeah. Cool. I'm Ethan, uh, I'm in Toronto. I'm a co-founder of Cosmos and Tenorment and looking forward to working with you all on interoperability uh, standards. Hey, I'm Sunny. Um, I'm also with uh, Cosmos and Tenorment and yeah, looking forward to uh, I think some of the ideas and like having some cool cross interoperability between Cosmos and Plasma. I'm David. Uh, so far, I've been working on uh, implementing the Plasma MVP for uh, Omise Go. And yeah, I'm super excited to be here with all you guys. Hey, I'm Jay. Um, I'm from uh, Tendermint and Cosmos, and uh, I, I'm excited because uh, we just figured out this pretty cool framework for uh, developing uh, blockchains in like in a modular way, and uh, you know, really want to see Plasma like implemented um, for Cosmos so that we can help scale Ethereum. So I'm really glad to be here. Awesome. Cool. 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 Yeah, I think that's everyone, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so I think going forward, um, the thinking for this call is ideally, obviously, this is the first call, so we were far more flexible about it, but ideally, in the interest of efficiency, maybe two connections per team. So I think like it's no problem if it's like a couple people get in a room and they're together and stuff like that in one connection. Um, just like in terms of, you know, scaling up the connections and making sure that there's not any latency issues. Um, and then in terms of participation, I think, um, for the people listening in, um, to this call, um, it's mostly, um, there's, uh, this is obviously an open group. Um, the, there is a, you know, lower bar in terms of, you know, um, as if you are doing an implementation and starting an implementation and have like a GitHub repo and starting working on things or doing some measure of technical contribution. As sort of the um, the sort of lower bar for joining this call, but it is open to anyone that um, is making measurable contributions to uh, the development of Plasma. Um, you know, whether it be writing solidity contracts or doing P2P stuff. You know, whatever or you know, fundamental research is sort of the thinking behind that. Um, if everyone's cool with that, I think that's sort of a, a good way to structure it. Um, mm -hmm. Right, like, yeah. it, like I think I think that's sort of like that way. It's like open and collaborative, but also you know, um, you know, efficient and moving things forward. Yeah. Um, and then um, in terms of pure logistics, um, we're sort of proposing this time um, every two weeks um, on Wednesday. Um, if that sort of works for everybody, um, are there any conflicts on your guys' end? Um, whether it be like it being too late or time zone or anything like that, um, we try to pick a time that works for everybody. Um, realistically, if it was held like too early in the morning for me, I'd probably yeah. like, you know, um, realistically, this sucks for Asia. It really sucks for Asia? Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, maybe we could move it forward a little bit, you know? Um, 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so in the future, um, I think in this call, no one's from Asia right now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For yeah. Asia, it would be even worse. So <laughs> it's better to stay like this. Huh? So for, for the Asia, it will be even worse. So it will be deep night. So it's better to stay with this little bit. Is in terms of... Um, wait, what's even worse? So, it, no, not like 9 a.m. Okay. Right now, Asia is uh, like Tokyo, 4 a.m. Okay. And, uh, Singapore, uh, um, Bangkok, 2. Okay. So, 4 is pretty useful, but we'll 
Yes, or four. Yes. 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 Yes
And so theoretically, you know, it could be used for centralized servers. It could be used for like networks running some BFT algorithm. Could be uh, could be used by like, um, some some fancy committee based algorithm. Like basically, if the uh, if the layer two chain fails, then the, the, the thing you lose is just the scale, uh, scalability. You waste people's time for a bit. And I am added in um, Joseph's uh, uh, prepare and uh, uh, commit mechanism, which is basically where if you want to send someone a coin, step one you send you send send a transaction. Step two, Plasma operator signs the transaction. Step three, you confirm the signature. And the purpose of this is to um, avoid a failure mode in the earlier version, where if you send a transaction and a um, uh, um, an attack happens while that transaction is in flight, and the transaction ends up getting included after a bunch of uh, uh, invalid transactions that claim the money first. Then, like you, you will still be like with this new approach, you'll still be able to claim money back. But with the old approach, you uh, you can't really. Uh, so it's implementing it requires mainly a few functions. The hard part is Merkle branch verification, just like getting all the details of UTXO format and writing a priority queue. Mm. And I think uh, David has been uh, working on that. Yeah, do you, David, do you want to go into your thoughts around that? We can't, we can't hear you. My thoughts on kind of where I am at with the implementation of minimum viable plasma. Is that what you were getting at? Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll share uh, the repo. Uh, so, so far, I've been focusing primarily on the root chain side of things, uh, just kind of like implementing the priority queue part in Solidity and uh, Merkle proof verification, as well as signature like uh, confirmation verification. So, that's been my main focus. And then the less done part is kind of uh, building a child chain and then a client piece. And then for the MVP, uh, I'm basically thinking that the root chain will be a test RPC one chain. The child chain will basically be a server, and then the client will just submit the transactions to the server and be able to, to submit blocks to the authority. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm super pumped about uh, trying to figure out how to use uh, accounts as opposed to UTXOs. But so far, uh, I have been unsuccessful at doing that, but I'm still uh, spending some time on that. Yeah, so one instinct from the account thing is that if you do have a state tree, then it actually it seems likely that like the, the simplest secure way to do it with accounts is basically isomorphic to the UTXO approach, but limiting to either transactions with two inputs and one output or two, uh, two outputs and one input. So I don't think we'll see much simplification. You might be able to get a bit more simplification at the cost of more complexity if you add a, a tree in or uh, like a Patricia tree, but that's like definitely not minimal viable. So yeah. probably a good for stage two. And like I, before we really start doing that, I feel like we might want to do a bit more thinking on kind of nailing down a kind of abstract model of you know, like what it means to plasmify a state machine and like what would it, what, what it would actually require. Yeah, I think I think um, definitely I would agree. I think like handling you know, things like nonces and things like that would end up being about end up being about the same size. But I think definitely there might possibly be optimizations which um, could make it like decently efficient, but I don't think it's like well explored right now. I think um, as a side point, one thing, um, Vitalik, um, I, I was talking to David the other day, um, and uh -huh. one thing that um, is, we, I'm not sure if it's in the spec or not, is, um, so as a reading the spec, I think one thing was about uh, reorgs. Mm -hmm. I think like basically saying like, as part of the contract, we're just like not gonna allow for it. Right. I think mm -hmm. like that's basically a good baseline for um, the chain, the plasma chain itself. Um, so the the current contract already doesn't allow for viewers oh, okay. on the plasma chain. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the, the the way the contract works, yeah, basically is that it just keeps on expecting a block with a sequence number higher than the yep. one block before. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, I guess that was implied, and I didn't. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
Um, I forgot. The other simplification I made for minimal viable plasma is this uh, thing where a deposit basically just is anyone making a block that has one transaction. That's yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think, uh, yeah, and after that, you can add it in later. I yeah. Think. yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then for, um, and, then, and then the notion is that not every block is going to be checkpointed in the chain, is, a, is uh, the presumption? Well, for minimal, every other block can be checkpointed. In okay, the chain. okay. So the presumption is there's no efficiency gain initially until you add that in. Kind of thing. Yeah, well, no, the, the efficiency gain just comes from the fact that blocks can have many transactions in them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought no. you said you were doing one transaction. No, no, the block. deposits are one transaction. Oh, ah, okay, okay. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, so um, I guess maybe next group, um, does the BankX team want to talk about sort of um, lessons learned so far? Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, everything which was told here in the channel before about every block will be fixed in a, uh, on a main chain, about two inputs, one output, and everything, uh, it's already in our demo and just get our code, code uh, reuse it. It's JavaScript, not standard, but still, I hope usable and readable. Uh, otherwise, we follow everything here, except we added um, a way to quickly withdraw uh, your uh, UTXO by just burning it to address equal to zero, which is just a feature, nothing more, allows you to withdraw without waiting for 24 hours uh, of a grace period which was, I think, our main contribution for this that's part. Otherwise, I'm not sure that's secure. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's secure. Uh, do you have I do. a diagram flow or like a, a, an explanation of how that works uh, written up? If you do, uh, I'd be happy to review it um, when it comes to security properties. Uh, yeah, it will be, would be very much appreciated, but uh, to do it you first, uh, you send a transaction, you sign it, so you send it to an address equal to zero and amount equal to zero. So you just burn, basically. A special type of transaction, and then on the main chain, yeah, and then on the main chain, you supply the proof that there is such transaction included in block, and you, you actually owned the previous burnt uh, output. And this way, it's basically just proves that it's your money which were destroyed. And then the contract on the main chain just automatically gives you your deposit. Okay, um, I would say the primary thing to think about if um, there's that um, if there's that type of functionality is um, essentially what do you do in the event of block withholding, and presuming that the withdrawing entity plus the uh, let's say, you know, uh, the, uh, the plasma block creator, let's presume this is a, you know, single POA, um, then um, if they are colluding and they withhold the block to everyone except for the withdrawer, um, there is a possibility of certain types of attacks, I think, if you don't have the ordered withdrawal construction, um, is my intuition around it. But I think definitely I would have to take a look at the construction. But um, essentially the attack would be, um, you know, someone um, creates a withdrawal. Um, there's an inter first of all, um, there's a block withheld that has an invalid state transition of everybody's money goes to the withdrawer, a step one. And then a second withheld block, which is withheld from everyone except for the withdrawer, um, whereby um, the withdrawer does a withdrawal, burns the coin inside that chain, and then inside the plasma chain, and then at that point they um, they take all the money instantly. Is the um, possible attack? Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, in the UTXO model, you can't really kind of like take people's money without publishing yet. Right? And I suppose what you could do is you could just you can withdraw the, the yeah, yeah. You, you can just like invalid you, state transition. Yeah, you can, yeah, or you just make an invalid block. Yeah, just yeah. Create a UTXO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's probably a simpler way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Re regarding the invalid block, uh, I had a lot of thinking about it, and if we well, for example, for block withdraw, uh, it's still not a much problem. Uh, so you still can withdraw in a slow process. You send a proof that you owned uh, a UTXO from some previous block, which was not withheld. 
and then you have like a counter for 24 hours and after 24 hours you still get your output uh, during this 24 hours period as was in the original paper an operator in case if it was, it, if it was double span for example in a plasma chain uh, this 24 hours is to stop the withdrawal if it's invalid and to actually stop this invalid withdraw in case if there was a burn to zero address you have to show this burn to zero address and then the original uh, person who was withdrawing his money can take this data and just show it to the parent contract just to prove that, well, this was my original withdrawal transaction. So it's just, you take the data which operator will have to supply to stop you from withdrawing. Um, An operator will have to show a transaction and the proof that it's in block. Right, the, the, the attack vector is that there is an invalid state transition of the current ledger set of who owns what. And then after that invalid state transition that's, that's withheld, um, then they do the withdrawal is the uh, attack vector. And the mitigation of that um, within um, you know, uh, the minimal viable plasma proposal is to uh, basically have orderly exits based on age um, and um, effectively getting around this orderly exit mechanism or immediate exit may allow for certain types of attacks. But again, I, I would need to take a look in terms of the design. Um, yeah, I, think, I think we should continue in private in the mail or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Just, so, just, um, just, just jumping in quick here. Mm -hmm. uh, the the cl security clean way to do immediate exits from plasma chains is to atomically swap plasma tokens with main chain tokens and yeah. channels. Uh -huh. um, that's, that's really the clean way to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. Um, yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, but definitely, um, yeah. Let's let's follow up with this online uh, one on one. I'll send you an email. You can take a look at this um, because maybe there is a possible way to do it. But uh, definitely, let's take a look. Um, yeah. On that note, um, Jeff, do you wanna do you wanna do you guys wanna? Talk about your interest in the space uh, and stuff like that. You get state channels experience and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I hope our audio is okay. We're having some problems earlier, but uh, uh, so we didn't get a chance to introduce ourselves at the beginning. Um, oh, yeah, we sorry. Are the um, uh, counterfactual uh, L four uh, state channels research team uh, minus Liam, who has another meeting and couldn't get back yet. Um, and uh, like we're super interested in plasma in general because we're interested in scaling stuff. Um, uh, in particular, some of the things that we're interested in are like uh, how can we make channels and plasma work together uh, to make them more awesome. Um, and we think there's lots of ways. Um, so like those are those are the main things that we're especially interested in. Um, and uh, uh, like obviously, there's lots of of. Uh, overlap and relevance in terms of, of standards and things um, where um, having standard templates and standard approaches to things in plasma makes it much easier to channelize lots of those inter interactions and uh, do like more advanced concepts like insurance and bonding and all that kind of stuff that can um, improve the capital efficiency and performance of plasma and channels respectively. Cool. cool, cool. Um, do you guys want to do like a full introduction and maybe a um, background of uh, the research that you guys have done when it comes to panels and various aspects of all that? Like... Sure. Um, so uh, I'll start. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff. Um, I uh, have been uh, indirectly working on channels um, in some way, shape, or form since, uh, I guess, uh, 2015 or something like that um, when uh, like coming up to uh, DevCon 1 um, I was working on some other projects that required channels I kind of assumed everybody would be working on state channels and um, of course that wasn't a term yet um, but I got to the conference realized nobody's working on it so I said okay well I have to start working on it so um, um, that's when I started writing we started doing a little bit of research um, and our, our main focus is on uh, generalizing the construction, like um, making uh, channels work past uh, just payments into more abstract things, um, like generic smart contracts and things like that. Um, so uh, that's that's me. Oh yeah, I'm Tom. Um, I'm kind of new to the, I guess, Ethereum 
guys have been working um, in this area for, I guess, three months now, um, under the guidance of Ian and Jeff. Right? Um, so in my past life, I was VP Engineering at a tech startup for four years, and before that I did a PhD. Oh. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Shanti, um, and I'm working on state channels for uh, uh, with, with, with this team. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so again, um, I can uh, about uh, the Cosmos team. Uh, I guess uh, you know, you're interested in uh, you know, Plasma, Ethereum, stuff like that. No sound. No sound. Anyone from oh, the Hey, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll start talking. The, um, <laughs> yeah, we, um, we're really excited about um, Plasma because the, you know, Ethereum is about to blow up in transaction volume. And there's going to be as much like transaction volume as we can possibly help scale. Right? So this is really exciting. Um, the, I, I, I'm, I don't know. Um, personally, a whole ton of plasma. I'm learning uh, as as we join this group um, what what plasma is and where it's going. Uh, so thank you for uh, bringing us in. Uh, I think our our best contribution would be uh, something along the lines of uh, uh, enabling zones, which is what you know we just call blockchain zones. Um, blockchains based on uh, you know, Tendermint uh, consensus algorithm to communicate with the Ethereum chain through uh, uh, inter-blockchain communication, uh, through uh, lightweight like packets, and then providing a, a framework to create uh, additional uh, blockchains uh, that can make use of uh, whatever communication is happening between the Ethereum main chain and, uh, and, and the corresponding blockchains. So we have, uh, in terms of a tool set that we've been developing, we have uh, Tendermint, which is the consensus engine, it's written in Go. Uh, we have a protocol uh, uh, to, to connect your state machine to Tendermint, and, and we've implemented uh, this thing called Ethermint, which is basically Go Ethereum with most of its RPCs well attached, but um, using Tendermint consensus. And so the next step would be to uh, plug that into a smart contract on Ethereum. Um, and I'm, I'm learning that Plasma is um, it's, it's like the, uh, mostly about, it seems to be like the, the core of Plasma appears to be the ability for anyone to like withdraw even in the, in, in the case of a failure of a zone, right? So even if the zone is trying to censor you from withdrawing your money, uh, you'll be safe because there's a period of um, of uh, approving that no, this is what actually happened along with some kind of fraud proofs. So I'm, st I'm still trying to learn all of this so we can we can do it. Um, but uh, so I still need to have a lot of learning to do. I have some questions about this uh, this uh, minimum viable plasma uh, link that was shared 426. Uh, so I'd love to discuss more of that and uh, just. Uh, yeah, work with you guys. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it'd be really fun to see, you know, Tendermint and Solidity. I think that'd be a lot of fun too. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, and then uh, finally, least but not least, um, the, uh, the Pegasus team. Uh, someone from there. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, interest in Plasma uh, is uh, related to the uh, new client that we're building. The new client is built in Java. It's uh, intended to be modular and pluggable. Uh, our goal is to be uh, to bridge enterprise use cases with the public chain. And uh, this is why Plasma is important to us. Uh, public chain technologies, Plasma, sharding, these are relevant. Uh, enterprises have a lot of interest in them. Uh, very similar to uh, how Jay put it nicely in terms of zones. Enterprises have a need for different types of zones, let's say, private permission chains. Uh, we want to be able to support uh, uh, Plasma with our new client. We want to have uh, Plasma in a enterprise ready fashion as well. So uh, working on things like uh, Plasma MVP, which I'm very happy to see that there is a spec for Plasma MVP. Uh, we're looking forward to finding out more about the details of these projects. Um, 
Uh, I also appreciate that there's a lot of uh, flexibility given to the different teams uh, to uh, work out the different, uh, you could say, uh, areas, domains that they're working on uh, as we come to uh, consensus on, on how Plasma might uh, appear in the public chain. So uh, very happy to see and work with everybody here. Yeah, and I think, I think it's not just, you know, Plasma within, you know, the, the base layer within a public chain. I think, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for, you know, enterprises in particular to be creating a, uh, a private, you know, Plasma chain. And that allows for basically all of the um, enterprise private blockchains basically to, you know, sort of have their cake and eat it too, to have, you know, um, private networks um, with the level of control that they like, while also having the decentralized enforceability where they abdicate control into a public network and being able to negotiate that in a way that is congruent with sort of all stakeholders within the context of their, um, their sort of business process needs. Um, yeah. Definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of compatibility there in terms of, you know, the possibility that basically, you know, every single private chain out there is running on top of the public Ethereum network. Yeah, definitely. I, I see that and I appreciate it uh, just based on the uh, different uh, companies that are uh, involved in the, in the call as well, like Bank XL4, uh, Tendermint. Uh, I'm very happy to Cosmos. I'm very happy to be alongside these teams. Thanks for inviting us. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I think, um, oh yeah, yeah. And then finally, Elaine. Uh, under and hey. possible areas of uh, you know, uh, collaboration when it comes to, uh, you know, the, what you guys are working on and uh, the sort of like uh, where are So we are uh, looking to develop a very fast chart to help um, scale Ethereum. And, you know, Ethereum had a crypto kitty earlier, which like really drove up the volume. And this morning when I was looking at the news, uh, there is this new blockchain company called Legal Flame. And they're trying to put um, a consent to have uh, uh, sexual intercourse on the <laughs> on the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with all of this, um, the volume of transactions will really shoot up, and we really want to scaling <laughs> all of this, right? So obviously, um, you know, we were talking to Vitalik about um, this really fast chart, and where we kind of we have this technique that uses this one layer of voting on top of an underlying blockchain to speed up transactions and to help um, uh, scaling things, scale things up. Uh, and uh, Vitalik, uh, you know, suggested uh, this very good question. How do we deal with um, paranoid security? That is like, what if the entire committee is corrupt? Can we still guarantee like people can withdraw their money? And then uh, we started thinking about it and I was like trying to kind of uh, come up with some solution like Plasma. And then, um, you know, Vitalik and Joseph like to told me about this very nice um, protocol, which is essentially this um, minimally uh, viable a plasma, this exit mechanism. So that's why I got really intrigued and I wanted to kind of um, see the, the various parties that are involved in developing this. And then potentially for Thunder Token, we can also um, down the road consider, you know, using such an exit mechanism to uh, have a better paranoid security for our fast shot. So that's um, uh, our interest. Cool, cool, awesome. Fun, fun, <laughs> <laughs> so um i think um you know we have uh possibly you know a little bit more time but um i think the key thing right now is just um finding a structure that sort of works for everybody so um, what type of if there's any input right now when it comes to uh goals when it comes to this working group um sort of structure of like how to collaborate formats and things like that do those uh, mm -hmm. yeah and having these weekly calls is definitely good to start off. Um, I, I think uh, every two weeks makes the most sense, perhaps. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. In, in, the, I was just, uh, in the in the document uh, sense, there's a kind of a proposal for you know everyone does a quick update regarding their research and regarding progress in their implementations, and then we can you know isolate a couple. Uh, key discussion points, maybe something similar to what we were talking about with the instant withdrawals, you know, something like that to, to kind of work things out in a longer form manner. This is kind of based on what the uh, Casper calls have, have looked like. Um, and, you know, 
So the, what's the general format of the Casper calls? It's um... yeah, it's it's generally like everyone gives a couple like a two or three minute update uh, oh, yeah. on their progress, and that goes research and implementation, and then if so, it's their individual implementation. Yeah, individual implementation and individual research, and then if there is a kind of uh, a sticking point uh, that is kind of generalizable to all of Plasma, then we can talk about that in greater detail. For instance, a proposed change to the minimal viable plasma or uh, something else. And I think, I think the goal here is not to get, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what your perspective mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe not like, the goal is not to be like, okay, implement minimal viable plasma, but it's just sort of a reference point for everybody yeah. in this call. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, it's just uh, figure out what, what improvements can be made on that, uh, how to sort of explore the different facets which, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe the, the minimal viable plasma does it this way, let's maybe try and do it another way or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there should be a bunch of different types of plasma chains and, and different architectures, and we just want to basically support and provide a kind of shared knowledge space where ideas can flow free, freely throughout the, you know, different teams implementing it. In terms of process, do you guys have other commentary or suggestions and things like that? I have a question, um, and uh, what's the best way to get acquainted with Plasma? I mean, we can, of course, read through the docs, but it would also help to just have a Q&A session with somebody or with a group. Uh, oh, if, yeah, uh, yeah uh, I think maybe next call we could just frame mm. it as an, uh, entirely like a Q&A session where we could all that answer good. thinking and sort of like get us all to the sort of forefront of thinking with that context. I think, um, you know, the paper is a little bit dense and convoluted at points, right? Um, I, I think um, Vitalik's writing with a minimal viable plasma is probably the fastest way to get up to speed in terms of design. And then after that, you know, reference the paper when it comes to the whys and decision making of a lot of the things. I think that's probably the best way in terms of an approach when it comes to getting up to speed. Yeah, and, and also David's implementation on the, the Plasma MVP, you'll, uh, that should kind of evolve over time and you can see the, the parallels between what Vitalik has written and, and that implementation. Um, so but also, you know, the other implementations that are visible as well. Absolutely. And, yeah. and stuff like that. And yeah. Vinkix, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, could we maybe live stream this to YouTube next time? If we're uploading it anyway afterwards? Especially for a Q&A session, I think that might be useful. I, I think, um, our, our, uh, my thinking personally, I think if we did do a live stream with the general public, um, then definitely that, that would, uh, uh, doing it live makes sense, you know, with the general public. But I think, mm -hmm. I think the context for a possible Q&A session is about, you know, just between all of us. And that way there's a level of efficiency when it comes to people, you know, having a certain level of um, expertise when it comes to this, right? Um, <laughs> less so than like, um, you know, Q&A questions like what is Plasma kind of stuff. Uh, but definitely, definitely that is a good point eventually. Maybe we should all have a Q&A session where we're all sort of answering the public questions together. Um, and we can do that maybe several months down the line um, or maybe weeks, I don't know. Um, but uh, I think maybe next call we could just say, you know, open Q&A and sort of, you know, like just understanding what, where the unsolved problems are and what the unknown, like known unknowns are. But I so, think... Uh, I have a simple question now, or yeah, I can wait. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, one, one point before I forget it is um, everybody here is sort of okay with recording this and publishing it, right? Like in terms of the general notions around that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes, so one question. Would be great if you could yeah. just cut that little um, snippet. And yeah, we got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. We'll do. Uh, is um, just conceptually, do I have this right? It seems like the idea is to have uh, plasma contracts on main Ethereum chain, yep. and uh, uh, the block hashes are being committed. So the consensus is. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's essentially offloaded to the Ethereum main chain, but uh, and, and any input transactions are also additional transactions into the Plasma contract. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't understand what happens when, for any reason, the Plasma zone splits, and it, like forks, and then maybe they start committing interwoven conflicting transactions, uh, block hashes. What do you mean if the plasma zone splits? Like, uh, that, that, uh, 
didn't happen. In yeah, like case. a split is impossible in this case because like minimal viable plasma is run by a dictator. I mean, you could replace it with something run by a like, consensus protocol, but but that like can't split either. Yeah. The presumption is, is that the ordering is basically reliant upon the ordering of the underlying Ethereum chain. And I see. And it's, it's every single block cache incrementing a number from zero. So you can't get anything interwoven. Yes. And then um, the primary complexity in the designs is the one around withdrawals. Because the notion is sort of conceptually think about it this way, right? Like we can all agree to shove money in a mattress, right? Like we just shove, we just shove like, you know, hundreds of dollars under a mattress. Okay, great. We got a bunch of money under the mattress. We can all see how much money is in the mattress. It's only when one of us starts to take money from the mattress that we freak out, right? Like, <laughs> well, if people are putting money under a mattress and there's no counting, I'd still be freaked yeah, out. The notion is we're all, we all, we all know how much we put in. We all tell each other how much we put in, but the moment yeah. someone starts reaching for the mattress, you better uh, make sure, like, you know, you, the, they're getting the right money. So that's what yeah, yeah. Wants, is with withdrawal, withdrawal mechanisms and proofs. Mm. I see. Okay. Great. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's almost like as a plasma chain consensus group, when I see withdrawals happening, <laughs> what, what happens if, uh, if a withdrawal happened? Uh, so someone withdrew money, uh, and then like, I try to submit the next block, which includes the transaction, uh, like a double spend or something. Uh, there are, it, it's similar to channels, state channels, whereby um, if there is an invalid withdrawal attempt, um, someone else can publish a proof and there's a bond and it's going to get penalized. Well, more, well, in more detail, there's two cases. One of them is if the uh, block, the someone publishes a withdrawal and the trend and the withdrawal gets included in the blockchain and in the plasma chain very quickly. In which case everything just continues, but the withdrawal just uh, gets uh, gets gets challenged by someone. The other case is if the plasma operator tries to cheat by including the withdraw, um, including the send after with the withdrawal is already fully clear. And that's just basically gets interpreted by the other users as invalid block and everyone else exits. Uh, so, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a bit confused in terms of the wording, so the pronouns. So, so on the Ethereum main chain, let's say there's a withdrawal request yeah. uh, transaction. And then you're saying that if the next block submitted from the plasma zone Includes uh, essentially a double spend of that transaction. A double, yes. Then, then this is an invalid block, and everyone will freak out. So in that case, it's um, the exit can get challenged. I'm saying if after like more than two weeks, a block, uh, a, um, a plasma block gets created that double spends an exit, and that exit, but that exit has already was drawn, then that's an invalid block or an invalid block. Okay, so then if a withdrawal request occurs and then the very next block commit from the plasma zone is one that double spends that transaction. In that case, what happens? Um, or can that not happen? Wait, so if in the very next block there's a double spend or what else? So a step one on the Ethereum main chain, a withdrawal transaction is submitted into the plasma zone. Okay. Step two. Now hold on. Uh, Withdrawal transaction is not submitted into the plasma zone. Withdrawal transaction is submitted into the main chain. Yeah, onto the main chain. Yeah, onto the plasma contract. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so step one, withdrawal transaction goes to the plasma contract. Mm -hmm. Step two, on the plasma zone, that same person who signed the withdrawal double spends their money here. Yeah. Uh, and then the step. Keeps, so the plasma chain keeps going. And step three, someone else takes the double spend on the plasma chain and uses it as a proof in order to cancel the, the um, withdrawal. Oh, I see. Because the withdrawal takes a while to complete. It's like yeah. a, there's like an unbonding period on this. Yes. Some period. Yeah. Okay. I see. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, two weeks from now, we'll have a call together about um, you know, general Q and A, um, getting everyone, you know, to speak together. I think this is sort of like, you know, the first steps of this in terms of, you know, the past 10 minutes, you know, uh, generally formats like that. 
Uh, are there any other item, action items or questions? Um, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, any, any, any thoughts, questions? Actually, is the Zoom link stable? So are we going to use the same link next in two weeks? Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the conference call link, is it stable? Yeah. Um, don't think so, but it will be next time if it's not this time. Great. And then um, for the next time, I do encourage um, two connections per team. Um, you know, I, th I think it's kind of, you know, you don't, you don't want like, you know, 10 people from a single project on a single call. Uh, but I think target it to two. I think obviously if multiple people are in the same room for connection, I think that's perfectly great, you know. Um, if you can find a way to like splice it in on your connection, have fun. But. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think, I think um, I'm really excited. I think everyone's doing like really awesome work. I think everyone here in this call is like really, really like capable. You're all like, you know, world renowned people when it comes to you know, development and like, deep thinkers. And I think it's really awesome that everyone's getting together to, um, you know, work on a certain facet of Ethereum scalability. You know, there's many, there's many different strategies for Ethereum to scale. And for this one, I think it's great that uh, everybody here is doing fundamental development and research and make things happen. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely agree with all that. Yeah. Cool. All right, see you all again in two weeks. See you in two weeks. All right, and bye. See you. Bye. Thanks, bye. Thanks, all.